today we have some actually, I think Ephesians is difficult. We, and, and, and the reading today from Ephesians is the first, whatever it is, 14 verses, but it's all one sentence. So that's challenging, but we'll probably go over this stuff in class for the two of you who watch these videos who are actually in class with me. But I wanted to share the account from the gospel and just talk about it briefly. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we, re we remember that the deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as ye can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting the watch. First of all, the Pharisees remember Jesus' prophecy better than the apostles do, apparently. But think about this for a minute. This is kind of strange. This is, you might say, overkill. I mean, if in fact this is what the disciples did, if they had planned to steal the body and claim that Jesus had risen from the dead, simply making up a lie, then the chief priests and Pharisees and the scribes and the conspirators, so to speak, are thinking, well, there will be folks who will go to the tomb to see. And when it's empty, they'll say, well, it must be true. But would that really happen? First of all, if the disciples are going around saying, is Jesus who was publicly tortured and killed on a cross and displayed and clearly dead, has risen from the dead, take our word for it. And if you don't believe us, his tomb's empty. Would that really carry much weight with anybody? Would anybody really even go to the tomb to check it out? It's a strange thing to try to guard against. But it reminds me of what's going on with this film, Unplanned, which my wife and I saw yesterday. Reluctantly, because it's a Christian movie, and most Christian movies are pretty awful. This one's really good. It's the true story of Abby Johnson and how she broke away from Planned Parenthood. And one of the main actors is an actor from my company, the Theater of the Word Incorporated, Kaiser Johnson, who plays the attorney at the end gives a very good performance. It's an unforgettable movie. It's extremely difficult to watch. And it's all based on a true story. It is a true story. They just made it into a movie. Now the reviews, if you look at the reviews, some of the reviews say, well, this movie is preachy. First of all, I don't think the reviewers actually watch the movie. And this does happen. People will review books and movies that they're opposed to on principle. They will not watch the movie or read the book, and they will write a negative review. This actually happens quite a bit. I think it's happening now. There's no way you can watch this movie and remain so-called pro-choice. This movie is devastating. But the reaction to it reminds me of the reaction of the Pharisees and the chief priests who come to Pilate. We want totalitarianism because we know that our unreality, our lie, cannot stand on its own. The only way we can shore up an unreality against reality is by bullying and brutalizing everything around us. And so there's no way you can give this movie an honest review. There is no way, if this were a pro-planned parenthood movie, people would be hailing it as a work of art. It's quite well made. But the connection is you have to go overboard. There has to be overkill. Because those forces, the conspirators, in this case, the conspirators of death, are fighting against the only reality there is. The only foundation that you can build upon is Jesus Christ. And so you've got to build your uh, house of cards in the sky 
And to do that, you need some elaborate architecture and planning. Well, think more about this strange conspiracy only recorded in Matthew about how the Pharisees demanded a guard because they remembered the prophecy of Jesus. And yet it's an odd thing to ask for. And it reveals, I think, a certain inner doubt. Anyway, also watch that movie, Unplanned. It, uh, it's, uh, you, can't walk, you cannot watch it and walk away unchanged. It really brings home the reality of what this abortion industry really is.